Feeling is the Secret, Chapter 2, Sleep. Sleep, the life that occupies one-third of our stay on Earth, is the natural door into the subconscious. So it is with sleep that we are now concerned. The conscious two-thirds of our life on Earth is measured by the degree of attention we give sleep. Our understanding of and delight in what sleep has to bestow will call it, cause us night after night to set out for it as though we were keeping an appointment with a lover. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when sleep falleth upon men, in slumbering upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Job chapter 33. It is in sleep and in prayer, a state akin to sleep, that man enters the subconscious to make his impressions and receive his instructions. In these states, the conscious and the subconscious are creatively joined. The male and the female become one flesh. Sleep is the time when the male or conscious mind turns from the world of sense to seek its lover or subconscious self. The subconscious, unlike the woman of the world, who marries her husband to change him, has no desire to change the conscious. Waking state, but loves it, and it is, and faithfully reproduces its likeness in the outer world of form. The conditions and events of your life are your children formed from the molds of your subconscious impressions in sleep. They are made in the image and likeness of your innermost feeling, and they may reveal you to yourself. As in heaven, so on earth. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, and Luke chapter 11, verse 2. As in the subconscious, so on earth. Whatever you have in consciousness as you go to sleep is the measure of your expression in the waking two-thirds of your life on earth. Nothing stops you from realizing your objective, save your failure to feel that you are already that which you wish to be, or that you are already in possession of the thing sought. Your subconscious gives forms to your desires only when you feel your wish fulfilled. The unconsciousness of sleep is the normal state of the subconscious, because all things come from within yourself, and your conception of yourself determines that which comes. You should always feel the wish fulfilled before you drop off to sleep. You never draw out of the deep of yourself that which you want. You always draw that which you are, and you are that which you feel yourself to be as well as that which you feel as true of others. To be realized then, the wish must be resolved into the feeling of being or having or witnessing the state sought. This is accomplished by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. The feeling which comes in response to the question, how would I feel were my wish realized, is the feeling which should monopolize and immobilize your attention as you relax into sleep. You should be in the consciousness of being or having that which you want to be or to have before you drop off to sleep. Once asleep, Man has no freedom of choice. His entire slumber is dominated by his last waking concept of self. It follows, therefore, that he should always assume the feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction before he retires in sleep. Come before me with singing and thanksgiving. Psalm chapter 95, verse 2. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Psalm 100, verse 4. Your mood prior to sleep defines your state of consciousness as you enter into the presence of your everlasting lover, the subconscious. She sees you exactly as you feel yourself to be. If as you prepare for sleep, you assume and maintain the consciousness of success by feeling, I am successful. You must be successful. Lie flat on your back with your head on a level with your body. Feel as you would were you in possession of your wish. 
and quietly relax into unconsciousness. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Psalm 121 verse 4. Nevertheless, he giveth his beloved sheep. Psalm 127 verse 2. The subconscious never sleeps. Sleep is the door through which the conscious waking mind passes to be creatively joined to the subconscious. Sleep conceals the creative act while the objective world reveals it. In sleep, man impresses the subconscious with his conception of himself. What more beautiful description of this romance of the conscious and subconscious is there than that told in the Song of Solomon? By night on my bed, I sought him whom my soul loveth. Chapter 3, verse 1. I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him and I not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me. Chapter 3, verse 4. Preparing to sleep, you feel yourself into the state of the answered wish and then relax into unconsciousness. Your realized wish is he whom you seek. By night, on your bed, you seek the feeling of the wish fulfilled that you may take it with you into the chamber of her that conceived you. Into sleep or the subconscious which gave you form that this wish also may be given expression. This is the way to discover and conduct your wishes into the subconscious. Feel yourself in that state of the realized wish and quietly drop off to sleep. Night after night, you should assume the feeling of being, having, and witnessing that which you seek to be, possess, and see manifested. Never go to sleep discouraged or dissatisfied. Never sleep in the consciousness of failure. Your subconscious, whose natural state is sleep, sees you as you believe yourself to be. And whether it is good, bad, or indifferent, the subconscious will faithfully embody your belief. As you feel, so do you impress her. And she, the perfect lover, gives Form to these impressions and outpictures them as the children of her beloved. Thou art all fair, my love. There's no spot in thee. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7, is the attitude of the mind to adopt before dropping off to sleep. Disregard appearances and feel that things are as you wish them to be. For he calleth things that are not seen as though they were, and the unseen becomes seen. Approximately Romans chapter 4, verse 17. To assume the feeling of satisfaction is to call conditions into being which will mirror satisfaction. Signs follow, they do not proceed. Proof that you are will follow the consciousness that you are. It will not precede it. You are an eternal dreamer, dreaming non-eternal dreams. Your dreams take form as you assume the feeling of their reality. Do not limit yourself to the past. Knowing that nothing is impossible to consciousness, begin to imagine states beyond the experiences of the past. Whatever the mind of man can imagine, man can realize. All objective, visible states were first subjective, invisible states. And you call them into visible by assuming the feeling of their reality. The creative process is first imagining and then believing the state imagined. Always imagine and expect the best. The world cannot change until you change your conception of it as within so without. Nations, as well as people, are only what you believe them to be, no matter what the problem is, 
no matter where it is, no matter whom it concerns, you have no one to change but yourself. And you have neither opponent nor helper in bringing about the change within yourself. You have nothing to do but convince yourself of the truth of that which you desire to see manifested. As soon as you succeed in convincing yourself of the reality of the state sought, results follow to confirm your fixed belief. You never suggest to another the state which you desire to see him express. Instead, you convince yourself that he is already that which you desire him to be. Realization of your wish is accomplished by assuming the feeling of a wish fulfilled. You cannot fail unless you fail to convince yourself of the reality of your wish. A change of belief is concerned and confirmed by a change of expression. Every night as you drop off to sleep, feel satisfied and spotless for your objective lover always forms the objective world in the image and likeness of your conception of it. The conception divined by your feeling. The waking two thirds of your life on earth ever corroborates or bears witness to your subconscious impressions. The actions and events of the day are effects. They are not causes. Free will is only freedom of choice. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve, Joshua 24, 15. Is your freedom to choose the kind of mood you assume, but the expression of the mood is the secret of the subconscious. The subconscious receives impressions only through the feelings of man in a way known only to itself, gives these impressions form and expression. The actions of man are determined by his subconscious impressions, his illusion of free will, his belief in freedom of action is but ignorance of the causes which make him act. He thinks himself free because he has forgotten the link between himself and the event. Man awake is under compulsion to express his subconscious impressions. If in the past he unwisely impressed himself, then let him begin to change his thought and feeling, for only as he does so will he change his world. Do not waste one moment in regret, for to think freeing feelingly of the mistake of the past is to reinfect yourself. Let the dead bury their dead. Matthew 8.22 Luke 960, turn from appearances and assume the feeling that would be yours were you already the one you wish to be. Feeling a state produces that state. The part you play on the world stage is determined by your conception of yourself. By feeling your wish fulfilled and quietly relaxing into sleep, you cast yourself in a star role to be played on earth tomorrow. And while you sleep, you are rehearsed and instructed in your part. The acceptance of the end automatically wills the remain. I'm sorry. The acceptance of the end automatically wills the means of realization. Make no mistake about this. If as you prepare for sleep, you do not consciously feel yourself into the state of the answer wished, then you will take with you into the chamber of her who conceived you the sum total of the reactions and feelings of the waking day. And while you sleep, you will be instructed in the manner in which they will be expressed tomorrow. You will rise believing that you are a free agent, not realizing that every action and event of the day is predetermined by your concept of self as you fell asleep. Your only freedom then is your freedom of reaction. You're free to choose how you feel and react to the day's drama, but the drama, the actions, events and circumstances of the day have already been determined. 
unless you consciously and purposely define the attitude of mind with which you go to sleep. You unconsciously go to sleep in the composite attitude of mind made up of all the feelings and reactions of the day. Every reaction makes a subconscious impression and unless counteracted by an opposite and more dominant feeling is the cause of future action. Ideas enveloped in feeling are creative actions. Use your divine right wisely through your ability to think and feel you have dominion over all creation. While you are awake, you are a gardener selecting seeds for your garden. But except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. John chapter 12, verse 24. Your conception of yourself as you fall off to sleep is the seed you drop into the ground of the subconscious. Dropping off to sleep, feeling satisfied and happy compels conditions and events to appear in your world which confirm these attitudes of mind. Sleep is the door into heaven. What you take in as a feeling, you bring out as a condition, action, or object in space. So sleep in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. 